thought. It was I'm a not, thought, and I blurted it out. I'm I did fine. not mean it that I'm not, way. I'm fine. Okay, but just understand, I didn't mean it the way it came Let's, out. Good. We'll take a poll on how you meant it with I'm, people here later after the show's over. Communication, and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. A comedian that came to L.A., and in his first year in L.A., he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading. What do you think a plant is? You know, someone really ought to check up on Kevin Hart and make sure he's doing all right mentally because it seems like the poor guy just can't catch a break lately. Every single day, there's some new accusation flying his way. People are saying all sorts of stuff about him, from calling him selfish to straight up labeling him as an industry plant. What do you think a plant is? I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies. Now, don't get me wrong. Being famous isn't all sunshine and rainbows. You're going to have your fair share of haters and rumor spreaders. That's just par for the course. But when it's not just random folks on the internet, but even people he's worked with in the industry who are coming out with the same accusations, well, that's when you start to worry. It all kicked off with Cat Williams stirring the pot earlier this year. And since then, it's been like a floodgate opening up. More and more people are stepping forward, saying their piece about Kevin. And now, it looks like Don Cheadle might be the latest to join the bandwagon. Word on the street is there's a whole stash of shocking allegations about Kevin that the public doesn't even know about yet, and Don might be gearing up to spill the beans. It's like the folks in Hollywood have had enough of Kevin's antics, and they're ready to air out all his dirty laundry. So what exactly are these supposed allegations? Let's get into it. You know what's really got people scratching their heads about Kevin Hart's situation? It's the fact that it's not just random folks calling him out, it's his own buddies and colleagues in the industry spilling the beans. I mean, we're talking about Don Cheadle here, not just some co-worker, but a friend of Kevin's. These two go way back. Remember that interview Kevin hosted with Don on his Hearts Peacock talk show back in 2021? The one where things got a bit awkward. So during this chat, Kevin kind of let slip a comment about Don's age and it didn't go down too well. Don seemed pretty taken aback and annoyed by it. And next thing you know, the internet's buzzing with folks calling Kevin out for being insensitive. And me, you know, I'm 56 years old. Damn! I'm sorry. But Don wasn't having any of it. He took to Twitter to set the record straight, basically saying, hey, watch the whole episode, folks. This is just how we roll. He even reminded everyone that they've got a history of ribbing each other, and it's all in good fun. Kevin himself chimed in, posting on Instagram about their friendship and how they're just being their usual selves, joking around and all. But now, it seems like even Don might be having second thoughts about Kevin. After all that camaraderie and defending him publicly, it's like the tables have turned. Now, if you want the full scoop on what's got everyone talking about Kevin, we gotta start with what Kat had to spill on the Club Shay Shay podcast. Kat straight up called Kevin an industry plant. He pointed out how quickly Kevin rose to fame, scoring a sitcom and starring in Soul Plane, all within his first year in LA. According to Kat, this raises eyebrows and makes Kevin's early history seem a bit like a mystery. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person, he continued saying. What do you think a plan is? Maybe people don't understand the definition of these words. A comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A., he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading. What do you think a plant is? For those of you who don't know about the ongoing showdown between Cat Williams and Kevin Hart, you might recall that the beef traces back to the 2008 film Fool's Gold. Williams was initially set to take the lead, but his legal issues at the time forced him to pass on the gig, which involved filming Down Under in Australia. Enter Kevin Hart, who swooped in and snagged the role instead. According to the grapevine, that's where the sparks of tension between Williams and Hart first ignited. Cat voiced his worries about letting folks who might not be straight up truthful spin their own tales without any checks. He talked about how messed up it is that the liars out there got all the goods and resources, leaving the rest of us playing catch up. And he isn't buying into the idea that having all those resources means you're automatically speaking the truth. According to Kat, it's a real concern letting these shady characters run wild with their own narratives, especially when they're sitting on a mountain of resources. But Kat isn't blind to the fact that speaking out might land him in hot water. He knows folks might see him as just another bitter, jealous comedian behind his back. When asked if he feared any backlash, Williams responded, 
Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? Is to act like it didn't happen. The whole Kevin Hart is an industry plant theory goes back to a Hollywood rumor that's been circulating for quite a while. There's this talk that entertainers are kind of blackmailed into wearing a dress on screen, almost like a rite of passage before they can level up in the fame game. And it's not just Cat Williams who's been talking about this, even Dave Chappelle has touched on it. In 2006, during an appearance on Oprah, Dave spilled the tea about why he turned down a whopping $50 million deal from Comedy Central. He wasn't in it just for the money because, as he explained, big bucks often come with some serious strings attached. Dave, being in the showbiz game since he was 14, had seen and heard stories about what happens behind the scenes. He pointed out examples like Mariah Carey landing a $100 million deal only to end up mysteriously labeled as crazy a few months later, or Martin Lawrence making it big and then suddenly waving a gun on the streets, screaming about someone trying to it's those stories that had Dave cautious. When Oprah asked him about hearing these stories, Dave laid it out. He'd seen it happen before, and it always went down when a person's career was on the brink of reaching the next level. According to Dave, he was pressured to create sketches that made people laugh at him, not with him. It felt like they were asking him to put himself on blast for a paycheck. And wait, there's more to this saga. Dave Chappelle even recalled being asked to wear a dress for a movie he did with Martin Lawrence. He walks into the trailer and sees a dress, thinking it's the wrong one. Turns out, it's for a scene where Martin's character sneaks out of jail by dressing Chappelle as a <laughs> Chappelle's like, nah, I'm not doing that, it wasn't in the discussion. They try to pressure him, saying it's a hilarious bit, but he stands his ground, saying he doesn't need a dress to be funny. The whole thing gets intense with writers, directors, and producers pushing, but Chappelle sticks to his guns. In the end, they come up with a new scene without the dress, and he's left wondering, how did you write that so fast? Dave just didn't vibe with it, not because wearing a dress is an issue on its own, but because he felt the industry was trying to corner black artists into doing whatever it took for success. They kept hounding him until they figured out he wouldn't budge. Dave revealed this whole experience was an eye-opener. It took being told to wear a dress for him to connect the dots and realize this wasn't just his struggle. Lots of other black men had been asked to do the same. Martin Lawrence rocked it in Big Mama's house, Eddie Murphy pulled it off in the Nutty Professor series, and Jamie Foxx left a mark with his unforgettable ugly Wanda on In Living Color. Then you've got the Wyans brothers trying their hand at it with white chicks. Oh, and we can't forget the less successful Juana Man. In the mix of all this, Tyler Perry takes the cake with his Medea franchise. During this time, an upcoming Kevin would join the conversation, dropping wisdom talks left and right. Kevin was all about artists protecting their brand, setting boundaries, and not crossing certain lines. At that point, he was vibing with his personal beliefs, no dress drama in sight. When the topic of wearing a dress for a role came up, Kevin was straight up like, nah, haven't faced that dress dilemma. Gotta know your boundaries and protect your brand. He was all about steering clear of anything that could compromise his image. Kevin even mentioned turning down a request to dribble a basketball on a talk show because it would make him look foolish. I only have ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, but here's where it gets interesting. Just a year later, and Kevin's on an SNL skit rocking a dress. Fans were not having it. Accusations of selling out and being fake started flying around. It was like, hold up, wasn't you just preaching about boundaries and protecting your brand, Kevin? The plot twist got fans feeling some type of way, and they called him out for doing the exact thing he said artists shouldn't do. But then, Kevin Hart pulled a complete 180 on us, flipping the script from his earlier stance on wearing dresses. He initially said, no way, I'm not putting on a dress. Fast forward to when the opportunity knocked, and he found the whole idea funny. Suddenly, he was like, why not? I'm doing it. But here's where it gets tricky. Kevin, in defense mode, starts saying nobody forced Martin Lawrence into Big Mama's house, or Tyler Perry into Medea, or Jamie Foxx into Wanda's dress. It was a choice, according to Kevin. I was actually one of those comedians that said, no, nah, I wouldn't wear a dress. There's no way I will wear a dress. And, and then, when proposed with the opportunity of what I felt was funny, I thought, oh, that's funny, I'm gonna do it. It's all about choice. You right. know, nobody makes you do anything. Right. Nobody says, this is what you gotta do. This is the only way that you're gonna do it. He's hitting us with the it's all about choice narrative. But then there's this counter argument floating around. People are saying it's not just a matter of choice. Kevin himself wasn't okay with the idea before the money talks began.
When the cash starts rolling in, suddenly integrity takes a back seat. It's like money becomes this magical thing that makes people do stuff they swore they'd never do. And truth be told, when that paycheck comes into the picture, folks tend to reveal their true colors. Remember when Steve Harvey dropped that bomb about integrity? He straight up said, give me 10 million and I'll embarrass myself all the way to the bank. He was willing to throw his integrity out the window for a hefty paycheck. It's a harsh reality, but hey, he put it out there. 10 million for 4 million. I, black people to be so embarrassed by my performance. You'll be sitting up there just going, look at this big lip, son of a. Now back to Kevin Hart. After he did the dress thing, his career went through the roof. He became the highest paid comedian ever, raking in cash like no one else. It's like the dress move was the golden ticket to success in the comedy game. People might argue about the sacrifice of integrity, but at the end of the day, Kevin's laughing all the way to the bank. And then there's Monique dropping bombs about how Kevin supposedly ditched her when she was going through some real rough times, facing the heat from big names like OPR Winfrey and Tyler Perry. And if that isn't enough to raise your eyebrows, there's talk that Kevin's been cozying up to both Tyler Perry and OPR Winfrey to climb the Hollywood ladder. Back in 2021, there was this memorable episode on Kevin Hart's comedy Goldmines podcast, where he had the legendary Monique as his guest. They delved deep into Monique's life, her rise in the comedy scene, and where she stands today in her career. Now, if you're not familiar with it, Monique has had some long-standing issues with OPR Winfrey and Tyler Perry. And trust me, we'll get into that later, so hang tight. During their conversation, Monique opened up about the struggles her family faced, describing it as being up against the wall. It was then that Kevin Hart, being the stand-up guy he is, stepped in to offer his support. He expressed to Monique that she's like family to him, a mother, an aunt, a sister rolled into one. And Hart didn't just stop at comforting words, he took action. Now Hart admitted he didn't really know OPR Winfrey personally, but he promised Monique that he'd reach out to Tyler Perry. And he did just that. After a heartfelt conversation with Perry, Hart came back to Monique with some promising news. Perry was ready to bury the hatchet and move past the drama. Hart, being the voice of reason, urged Monique to do the same. He told her, let's leave all that negativity in the rearview mirror, Mo. We've got bigger things to accomplish together. But Hart's generosity didn't stop there. In a conversation with Shannon Sharp, Monique revealed that Hart not only offered emotional support, but also extended a professional hand. He proposed to partner with her and even offered to executive produce any project she wanted to bring to life. Monique recounted Hart's words saying, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he didn't want to revisit it, but I'll tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just do great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever you want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. She also spilled the beans about how Kevin came through big time, lending her a hefty sum of cash. And get this, she even returned it with interest. But here's where it gets juicy. After Hart promised to help her get her talk show back on track, naturally Monique was stoked, and who wouldn't be? Having Kevin Hart as a producer could skyrocket any project. So she excitedly tells her producers and Endemol, her media production company, and they're all on board, thrilled at the prospect of working with such a big star. But plot twist, two weeks later, Monique gets hit with some devastating news. Endemol drops the bombshell that Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky, gave them a ring to say that Kevin had cold feet. Monique picks up the phone, hoping for an explanation from Hart himself. And what does she get? A vague reassurance. We'll talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it, he says. Some miscommunication and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you right now, some miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. Fast forward two years and crickets. Monique hasn't heard a peep from Kevin since. But hold up, here come the armchair detectives. Some fans are crying foul, suggesting that maybe Kevin never intended to help Monique in the first place. They're pointing to his sketchy track record, like that time he claimed he didn't really know OPR Winfrey. I mean, come on, who could forget the whole OPR sending him flowers ordeal after his accident in 2019? 
In a chat with Ellen, they got into it, with Ellen explaining how she reached out to Kevin after hearing about his accident and back surgery. Kevin shared that he received plenty of flowers from well-wishers, but it was OPR floral gift that stood out. According to Kevin, OPR flowers are like a never-ending story. They're still thriving, turning his place into a botanical paradise. It's become a joke in his house, with everyone wondering when OPR flowers will finally call it quits. Kevin even joked about someone secretly watering them because despite neglect, they just won't die. The flowers are so significant that they've taken over the dining table, leaving the hearts eating on the floor rather than disturb OPR cherished plant. And now, he's claiming he doesn't really know her? Seems fishy, right? And then there's the wild rumor mill spinning tales about Kevin selling his soul to the likes of OPR and Tyler Perry. Supposedly, if he had lifted a finger to help Monique revive her career, it would have put his own career in jeopardy. Now let's circle back to her previous beef with OPR Winfrey and Tyler Perry. This drama started way back in 2009 when Monique starred in Precious, a movie produced by OPR and Tyler Perry and directed by Lee Daniels. The real beef kicked off when OPR and Tyler decided Monique should hit the press circuit for the film without any paycheck. Monique wasn't having it and straight up said, nah, not in my contract. According to Monique, she only got a measly 50K for the whole movie, which was barely enough. Now they wanted her to jet around the world promoting the film for free, not on Monique's watch. But OPR and Tyler didn't take her refusal well at all. Instead, they started trashing her reputation in the industry, spinning a narrative about her being difficult to work with. Monique spilled the tea, saying Tyler Perry told her, You may want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. Monique was like, Hold up, I'm a black woman. Where are they paying those salaries, brother? She straight up told Tyler, I can't work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I can't go overseas and do this for free. Their back and forth continued, with Tyler saying he doesn't believe in giving money away for free, and Monique firing back, I don't believe in working for free. So we on the same page? It's a classic case of clash in values, and Monique wasn't backing down. As well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we on the same page. She also claimed Tyler Perry allegedly went the extra mile to mess with her acting gigs. According to Monique, it all went down after she turned down a request to fly to France for the Cannes Film Festival, tied to promoting the movie Precious. So, check it. The movie studio initially asked her to jet off to France, but Monique, with her busy schedule as a talk show host, comedian, and family woman, respectfully declined. They tried to sweeten the deal by offering to upgrade her hotel room, but she and her husband stuck to their guns, saying, Nah, we're gonna spend this time with our family. She said, OPR, I'm doing a talk show. I'm doing a comedy tour. I have a husband and I have babies. I have a little bit of downtime and I'm going to take advantage of it. So I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. So we mutually agreed to disagree. That was it. Next thing I know, I am considered difficult and hard to work with. When the third call came and they asked, what's it going to take to get Monique to France? Her husband straight up asked, is there a number associated with it? That's when they dropped the bomb that they would never pay for anyone to do promotions for a movie. Monique revealed she was paid a mere $50,000 for Precious, and it wasn't about the money. She signed up to do it with her friend. The interviewer dug in, suggesting she needed the money to feed her family and pay bills, and Monique responded, I think that's what America says. We all say, I can't do it for free. She explained that when the movie studio refused to pay for her Cannes appearance, they didn't make a fuss. But then the report started flying, painting Monique as demanding and difficult. The whole thing boiled down to a simple request that they understood couldn't be met. But suddenly, Monique found herself labeled, and that's where the drama kicked in. Because what people didn't know was, I was paid $50,000 to do the movie Precious. And it really wasn't about the money, and I'm not complaining because I signed up to do it with my friend. It says we can't set a precedence and pay you to do this. We didn't have an issue with them. Okay. But that's when the reports came that now Monique is being demanding and she's being difficult. Then there's the whole alleged cheating saga. There was this interview with Tasha Kay where Kevin's former assistant decided to spill some serious tea. We're talking cheating allegations, gambling habits, and a whole lot of other drama. The assistant reportedly spilled that Kevin has been cheating on his current wife, Aniko Hart, and he's allegedly involved with a flight attendant named Nick Morgan. The assistant even claimed that Aniko was supposedly pregnant with their second child while Kevin was, well, leaving 
Men stains all over the counter at the heartbeat. And apparently he's doing the whole shower at the side pieces place and then head home routine. Tasha K didn't let up and straight up asked about a potential gambling problem. Turns out, Kevin's game is poker, and allegedly, he went on a gambling spree that was so intense, they had to cut half checks to the crew. Told Aniko, like, Kevin is cheating on you with a girl named Mick Snorgan. She's his flight attendant, she's on his planes. Does Kevin have a gambling problem or something? His game is poker. So, right after that jaw-dropping interview, Kevin was not having any of it. He went full-on lawsuit mode. He filed a lawsuit against Tasha Kay, claiming she tried to squeeze him for cash by threatening to spill the tea from the interview with his ex-assistant, Maisha Shakes. And the lawsuit even called out the assistant for supposedly tossing out some falsehoods. The thing is, Tasha Kay apparently told Kevin, hey, pay me $20,000, and I won't drop this damaging interview bomb about you. And that damaging interview is the one we just saw. Now, Kevin's legal squad caught wind of this and said Tasha was basically trying to strong arm him into paying up. And when the money didn't come through, she was all set to unleash the entire interview. Kevin's lawyer is throwing down the gauntlet, saying Tasha has already dipped her toes into criminal conduct and torturous acts. They're warning her that if she doesn't stop, not only will the damages Kevin can seek increase, but she could also be looking at some serious criminal penalties. But Tasha Kay isn't exactly a stranger to lawsuits, and Kevin taking her to court isn't deterring her. She's still on a mission to unearth all of Kevin's secrets. Well, it appears that Kevin isn't just the lovable, funny guy we've all grown accustomed to. There's supposedly this whole other side to him that's been kept under wraps. But I'm curious to hear what you all make of these allegations. Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.